Hello, and welcome back to the channel. My god, my voice is going already. I've got a really sore throat at the moment, so it's not going to be my usual enunciation, but we'll have a go. Also, going to be honest with you, it's getting perilously close to Friday, and I haven't got the video done, so this will be another Bandicam job just with pausing the recording and resuming for the cut. So it's not going to be the most elegant of videos, but I will do my best. And I always like to try and get a new video up on Friday. So you'll have to just bear with me if this isn't up to my usual exceptional standards of Oscar-winning superbness. So then, what have we got going on here? It is time to put something new into the Hall of Fame. Now, let's have a look there. There are... Oh, thank yes, automatically saving. Thank you. I've, I've, we've all got Office 365 subscriptions now. We're all using OneDrive and Office 365. It's all a little bit shiny and new. So then, there is the uh, current list of residents of the Hall of Fame. And you can see there, down at the bottom, this is going to be the latest, the new resident of the Hall of Fame, it will the, be the Barcrest Six Pounders, because I'm not putting a single machine in, or in my head at the moment, it's not going to be a single machine. It's going to be a whole kind of plethora of machines, because there were loads of these, and I think Barcrest had the AWP absolutely nailed. They got this thing down to perfection in the Six Pound era. And specifically, they did it with a whole range of start-to-trail finish feature machines. So, we've got two of them here, which are Adders and Ladders and Roadhog. Now, I've very deliberately got Adders and Ladders here, because this actually started off on a £4.80 jackpot. I have got it in my head that this is the first of these, the first of these absolutely classic Barcrest £6 jackpot machines start to finish trail games that they did. And there were lots of them. I've put a list together, which I'll bring up on the screen in a moment. However, Adders and Ladders definitely started on a £4.80 jackpot, but right at the arse end of the £4.80 era, and they knew, they obviously knew that it was going to be changing in the very near future because the layout here, as captured by uh, Re-Emulated, the chap who's gone through several names over the years, a little bit chameleon-like, he does keep reinventing himself, but he has been around on the fruit machine emulation scene basically forever, and his layout captures it here perfectly, with the decals. Can you see there, and I do remember this being on the on the real machine back in the day, can you see there that the blue sevens and red sevens have got those little decals there, and they very deliberately, if you look on the actual feature trail here, because that wasn't done with decals, then the spot there right at the top is token jackpot, and then the end of the trail is all cash jackpot plus repeat chance. So when the £6 jackpot came in, which it did very soon after this was released, all operators had to change was these two decals here. And I think that also explains why the triple bars are £2.20 and not £2.40 as well. Because if this, when this machine was originally released on the 480 jackpot, of course, your blue sevens would have been two forty and your red 7s would have been 480, so they had to delineate between the triple bars and the blue 7s. Hence, triple bars were 220, whereas for all the rest of the Barcrest uh, £6 machines, your triple bars were worth 240. So, technically speaking, I'm a little bit off in defining these as the £6 era of Barcrest, because Adders and Ladders here did start off as a £4.80 jackpot machine and I remember playing them in the pubs of Radcliffe and Bury on £4.80 and then very shortly after we got the exciting all new £6 jackpot and if you look at it in the attract mode there you can see there with the all new £6 jackpot so you got £3 cash and £6 tokens. 
So let's just have a look at how many of these bloody things there were. So that is just my initial list from having a quick scan through my Fruit Machine emulation folders from over the years. That is a pretty big list hit there of machines that are essentially all from this £6 token jackpot 20p play era. You can have a look down that list for yourself. There isn't a duffer in there. None of those are bad machines. I think Run For Your Money is a little bit of an outsider because that wasn't a start to finish trail. It had these sort of concentric levels moving and it's a bit more of a round and roundy one. But looking at them there, I think all of those other ones there are start to finish trail machines. Don't know how much of the code was shared behind the scenes. They certainly all felt very similar to play and they were... I would say fairly low variance. They were fairly flat profile. If you compare, compare them, sorry, that is staying in. If you compare them with the likes of, say, the Maygays of the time, like your, your Pink Panthers and such like, they were more streaky, I think. that they were. You would generally get involved with, with Maygays and maybe BFMs of the time looking for the streak, whereas... On the bar crest, they seem to be far flatter profile, to the extent that Mimi Mates kind of thought that these things didn't have a streak in them for quite a while. And then one day I actually caught a natural streak on Roadhog. That's why this Roadhog is here. We kind of thought it was you'd get maybe a few three pounds, a couple of six pounds, something like that. You know, maybe build up a bank of 15, 16, 17, 18 quid. But they didn't seem to have that. 30 odd pound plus streak in them that um, the May Gays, not the BFMs, because the BFMs weren't really streaking in the, in the 480 early six pound era, but maybe your aces, your play it agains, and all that kind of thing. But then one day I was out in a pub in Manchester and caught a Roadhog on a proper streak, and it went for well over 30 quid. So they did have streaks in them, but they were rarer. These were fairly rare streaks, but they did have them. And what I am kind of saluting here is the masterpiece of AWP design that all of this Barcrest family of machines represented. Let's just bring the list up again. Scan down that list there. These were all really good fruit machines. And if it weren't for the fact, frankly, that companies like Barcrest and their designers were so good at creating playable fun and let's be honest addictive machines on awful percentages you've got to give uh, credit to awp designers because they're working with absolute dog shit percentages of like 76 78 percent which is what operators tended to put them out at despite the developers of the machines themselves saying you want to be putting these out at you know 84 percent or better to give your players a decent game. The operators ignored that because they were greedy. And yet somehow, the developers, the designers of these games, the various fruit machine companies at the time, managed to churn out enjoyable, engaging games, even with these awful, awful percentages. Now, of course, they were helped along a bit by the sensible stake to prize ratio, whereby you've got a 20p play and a six pound jackpot so your jackpot there is effectively 30 times your stake which wasn't far removed from the you know kind of jackpot stake ratio on the four pound 80 jackpot where it was 24 times i think you can see that through the history of fruit machines as a whole where the jackpot as a multiplication of the maximum stake was sensible the games tended to be better and they tended to be more fun and you could play them for enjoyment as ra rather than just trying to win money. And now we've got, you know, obviously in the, in the £1, £100 jackpot era. So where your jackpot is now, what, 100 times your stake as opposed to 30 times your stake. So we can very much understand against that backdrop why fruit machines are far more unforgiving and far less fun to play than they were back 
when these machines were around, but you've still got to give credit to the designers of the time for turning out machines which, if, if they weren't so good at what they were doing, I probably wouldn't have got so addicted to the bloody things. That was the, the thing with these machines is they were enjoyable and they were engaging to play. You knew that you could win money, but they kind of entertained you while you were gambling and even when you were losing your money, there was something about them that there was a real, real hook to them that I do not get with modern machines. It may just be that I've got older and I'm not bothered so much anymore, but I've got it in my head that if fruit machines back in the early 90s were as utter, utter nonsense shit like they are now, I would have never got involved with them as I did. But this is what was around in 1990, 1991 and 92 when I really got balls deep in fruit machines. So I have said this before, it's a little bit bittersweet because on the one hand, I'm, I've, I've kind of got my roast, uh, roast tinted glasses on and I'm remembering these as great machines, which they are. But I've also got to be mindful of the fact that they were, I say responsible, I'm responsible for my own actions, but they were part of the worst years of my gambling addiction. But all that said, you've got to give credit where it's due, and these were great machines. A lot of my friends and the people that I was around with at the time went out to the pub with, they could play these machines and they could enjoy them and they put a few quid in, maybe they'd win, maybe they'd lose. And they did, you know, they, they weren't the helpless addict that I was. So that's kind of on me. It's not on the machines themselves. So with that said, let's have a little go through. Now I've got four in particular that I'm going to have a look at here. We're going to do Addison, Ladders and Roadhog. And then we've also got behind here, ba -ba -da -ba -da, Andy Cap and Games Bond 600. All around in very much the same time period uh, for Andy Cap and James Bond. Obviously, the six pound jackpot was very much it's kind of part of the scenery at that time. And James Bond itself, of course, is making play. The fact that the jackpot is six quid, there was also a kind of reskin, semi clone of Adders and Ladders called Hyper Viper, which was released with the six pound jackpot. It was kind of a slightly updated Adders and Ladders, but that started with the six pound jackpot. The other thing that happened in this era, by the way, is that Barcrest went to the full sample sound package. Now, going down this list here, Adders and Ladders and Hyper Viper and Viva Las Vegas all had the Yamaha synth chip in them, which sounded fantastic. I love the sound and music that that Yamaha synth chip generates, but they then moved to a full sample package. I have kind of got it in my head that Roadhog may have been one of the first, if not the first, full sample package that Barcrest did. It was certainly very close. I clearly remember them having one of these in the Royal Oak pub in Radcliffe. And some engineer, I don't know if uh, by accident or on purpose, had left the volume right. It must have been pretty much 100% volume. And this cabinet had, there was, you can't see it here, that some cabinets for Barcrest, a little bit later, like a shitty little speaker up here. Uh, Viva Espana and Duty Free had a shitty little speaker up here. But these earlier ones had a fairly big, meaty speaker down near the coin tray. So we can't see it on the layout, of course, because it's out of where the layout uh, ends. Well, they could kick out some serious volume. And I don't know if whether this engineer just liked the fact that there was fruit machines that were playing like proper kind of music samples and the Beatles, because it plays you, um, you know, you, you can drive my car when you get the jackpot on Roadhog. So it's a little bit of a transition phase in that period, uh, in, in that respect as well, in that all of the manufacturers, not all at the same time, but they all went from older either really shitty sort of AY chip effects, which some of the earlier MPU4 machines had. A few of them, are certainly definitely Mege and Barcrest had this sort of interim level where they had a little bit more of a synth chip going on, and then they, all the manufacturers, moved to full sample packages. 
So let's just put a few credits through Adders and Ladders. Now, I've just loaded these up. I've got no idea where they're actually up to. So, I mean, these generally, none of them went too mad, really. So I'm hoping that we won't find any of them completely on the bums. And let's just see what happens. Ooh. Now, the, th Ooh. the thing with these is... There were little, adders and ladders for me was always a little bit like the May Gate of the time, whereby you wanted to try and leave the hold after nudges for a feature because it did seem more likely to offer you a hold after nudges for a feature than a win. So we're in now. Now the, the the absolute shit start it liked to do was just roll a five and give you snake bite. We don't want that. There we are. We've got past. Oh god, that could get that's. Okay, now if it stops on a quid, it's a collect prize. If it's 120, I can carry on. Now I can carry on. And I've got past that shitty little snake there that drops you down 60p. It's looking okay-ish for now. So one, two, three, four. So I can... I could already have three quid. And you know what? Out in the wild, I'd have three quid here. But for the sake of this, we'll carry on. But it's pretty ruthless, this machine, when it comes to killing you. Oh, skill. Now, skill cash is a, well, I say easy, that's three quid, but I've always got the feeling that it cheats you. It goes up and down the lights here, and I've always thought that it cheats you on the jackpot. So it goes whoop, 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 and whoop, whoop, whoop on them, so I'm not going to take that. Plus, I'm sh oh, God. Oh! Well, there's a start, isn't it? Now, the thing is, why would you ever carry on? Yes, if you want to get to the end to get the all-cash jackpot, that would be fine. But it did love to roll a one here, so we're going to collect our token jackpot. And you get a nice little sound and light show just for six quid. So, I did not know that was going to happen. I didn't know my first board there was going to be the token jackpot, but that was a fairly good start there. There we are. So we'll collect that back out. And just have a little listen there to that uh, that Yamaha synth sound. It was lovely. I, I kind of missed it when these really good... I, I hated the old bloopy bleepy sound that the earlier machines had, but I did like... I had a real soft spot. I think JPM did it, Mayge did it, uh, Barcrest did it. They all got like a, a nice little synthy chip style thing going on, which I, I, to this day, I have a real... Oh, ooh, just dodged the snake there. To this day, I have a real soft spot for. Don't want snake bite. Ooh. Well, it's going to be three quid if you even have a lose. Oh, and it has. That would be fine, and I would actually be quite happy with that because... I was an absolute bugger with this for just carrying on. Uh, you would collect, I think, Cash Attack. Can you see there? That blue square, Cash Attack and Super Stepper. I would generally collect because they were like a win series -y kind of thing. And they could go for reasonable amounts as well. So we've got another feature. We've, we seem to have caught this in a fairly good mood, don't we? So let's have another feature. Ooh, how many nudges for a jackpot? One, two, three, four. See if we can manage that. I mean, it's flattering me a bit here. It can be an absolute pig right down at the bottom of the board. When it's in a bad mood, five to that is really common. You've got that one there, and it loves to use that snake there, which just drops you back down to six. Oh, fuck off. Drops you back down to 60p. Now, this is... I could still survive this. Oh, and there's the snake bite. Ah. 80p, and that would be... It just pays out that in tokens. So it would have just spat out 420p tokens at me. That's why you didn't see that go in the bank, by the way. Nothing's gone wrong there. That would have just been... In fact, you can actually see there, out is 68. So that's the £6 jackpot and the 80p of tokens. It would have just spat out. As soon as you get the snake bite, drops you back down to the start. And then you get your crappy little token pair. That's a nice, a challenging climb there, up to two pounds sixty. Oh bugger! Oh for bah! Well, it's we started off fairly strong. It's going to spit out, yeah, three. We'll collect out our three quid. I'll just put one more pound in. And I mean, what I, my whole point with this video, I think, is just to oh, there we are. That's that nice little hold after nudges. 
which it does seem, I'm sure it's not just my imagination. Same way with the May Gaze, where you would go for a hold after nudges on the feature rather than actual paying symbols. They, they, this machine in particular did seem really, really happy to give you... Oh, God, don't you dare snake bite. Oh, boost. Did seem to really be happy to give you the feature hold, but not a win hold. So we've got past the worm. Is there another? I don't. Oh! Well, you're going to have that. It actually has. I think if you fuck it up, it, it does it for you. There we are, yeah. And another jackpot. There we are. Splendid. So what I'm going to do is move my way through through all four of these machines. And the idea is to just demonstrate uh, across the, all of them that whilst you could win or lose, with the, unless you were absolutely getting, you know, if, if they had done their very rare streak or something like that, or if there was an exploit on them, because I do remember getting my ass kicked a few times by these, but generally speaking... You could walk up to one of these machines and you didn't need to have a huge amount of money about you. Just kind of a tenner. If you had like £10 coins, or were prepared to go back to the bar and change a fiver and get another £5 coins, you could usually get a decent game out of these. So let's just put... Now again, I have no idea what's uh, going on there. Uh, Happiness why so on this machine here the one on the left there we had that was a, a re-emulated DX it is going back a few years that one it's certainly not from the new era of MFME on the right hand side here we've got a ploggy 1600 DX of Roadhog and this one was released in November of 2009 I think the 1600 DX had got a little bit more in the way of um, sort of popular acceptance by then, but it was still a fairly um, spicy proposition. But of course, we had oh, there's three holds. We had MFME V3 by then, so you could do the resize. That was the thing. Once you got the resize option, kind of everyone was happy, really. So then, let's. Oh, now we obviously want to pass this, although I was after the shitty auction. There we are. Now the coppers are probably going to do some challenging moves in the not too distant future. Wow, it's letting me get way ahead there, but. So I've got three quid. Ooh. You're joking. Not a hundred. Oh, per. Oh, skill bow, come on. So I can have the jackpot. You know, oh, can I not, you know, I'd, I'd actually go for top gear. It's not going back to top gear, so I'm going to have to have the jackpot. So there's the Beatles and drive my car. I, I very clearly remember me and my mates being quite astonished that the that a fruit machine in a pub was playing the Beatles at us. I, they're the things that we were impressed by, you know, 27 years ago, 20, 26, 27 years ago, something like that. This must have been out. So this is, in many regards, Roadhog and Addison Ladders, and indeed all the machines that I'm going to look at here. They're, they're kind of cut from the same cloth. Ooh, what, what, can we not get a fucking... I mean, the feature's not up there. I can see that, but... Oh, oh, you know, that was past part. Well, I might be able to do better there and leave it on the uh, feature. So, yeah, they are they are all kind of different sides of the same coin in that they... That should hold... Oh, that didn't hold. They all do basically the same thing. You've got a sensible state to prize ratio. And Barcrest have been able to use that to give you... So I can either hold after nudges there or hold... See, the little flash on the reel. So it will just give me a nudge to get put me in. And Barcrest, I think, were the masters of this stake to prize ratio, and they used it to create. Ooh, come on. It should let me get away with this. Should be okay here. Now the police may start catching up. Yeah, Barcrest were able to. Uh, 
perhaps more effectively than any of the other companies at the time. Ooh, we should get away with that. Oh, just about to create these incredibly playable, in incredibly compelling fruit machines that I literally could not get enough of. I would go down to the pub. Oh, token blitzes. Let's just... Uh, I should probably collect that. You know what? I will collect token blitz. So that's £1.60. We can't actually... This will not add into the bank. Because it literally just paid out the tokens. So that's, uh, what? £2.40. There's three quid in tokens. You wouldn't be too happy with that, would you? Okay, so there's three... Oh, three eighty. Well, that's not too bad, but it's about exactly where you'd expect it to be. Oh, there we are. Hold all three. But yeah, I would go out. I would go down to the pub. If I, if I only had, like, a tenner. Literally, if I had ten quid in... <laughs> you can fail that sometimes. If I had ten quid in all the world... That would not stop me walking down to the pub, and uh, quite often. Oh fuck! Step out of the car, please. Not even buying like a proper drink, just getting like a coke. Oh shit! I held something there. Not even getting a proper drink, just buying a coke, just to give me the maximum amount of money because that would give me nine pound odd to play the machines with, and. Yeah, I, I was absolutely consumed by these things, and there was nothing I liked more than just being able to get myself to the pub. And it was usually the pub. The arcade would do as well. I was a, a very uh, frequent patron of the arcades of, of Bury and Manchester at that time, but my preferred poison, if you will, was the pub, because then you could get alcohol and gambling in one convenient package. Unless, like I say, I was really short of cash. In which case, like I say, if I only had like a tenner, then the gambling would take precedence. And I'd, I'd, I'd kind of go down to like a soft drink just to give me the maximum amount of money to play the fruit machines with. But my preference would be to get drinks and gambling. Because uh, that's a healthy lifestyle choice, isn't it? So this has gone a little bit dead here. Um, we'll just see if we can take it out for one more feature. Has Ploggy enabled the token input? Yes, he has. Good old Ploggy has enabled the token input. I didn't get the three holds there, so... Ooh, so I've not... Well, 100 and... Uh, I'm sorry, £11.20 in, £9.80 out. I did far better on ads and lads, which was £6 in and £16.48. So let's uh, move to Tier 2. Now, these are both Pook re-releases on MFM EV6. The two layouts we were just looking at were older MFM uh, V3 layouts, which will still run in version 5.1, but these are both machines that Pook has updated for the new version, version 6 and 6.1. So let's have a little go at Andy Cap here. I think he's gone a little bit less crap. Has he slightly undarkened this layout a bit? Because I always did think it was a, a shade on the dark side, this layout. It does look absolutely lovely, though. I mean, all these layouts look lovely. And uh, there we are, hold off and And I cannot stress enough. Uh, it, does, it does need repeating here. Because you can kind of get a little bit blasé about it. But to just be able to load this up kind of at will on my on my PC so I'd, I've kind of got out I was trying to do this a bit more early on and I've got out the habit and it's very naughty of me is, is to really give due credit and due thanks to all of the people who make these this, well the whole thing possible obviously you've got Wizard himself with the emulator the coding of the emulator itself without which none of this would exist all the layout designers, the people who've gathered resources and dumped ROMs and gone to the trouble. It's it's hard to make a comprehensive list of the and, and, and fully credit everyone for the amount of effort that goes into the absolute wonder, the absolute majesty that is. You know, we almost take it for granted now, but I, I think part of me still goes back to that state of mind in, in, in two thousand and one. When I first loaded up a fruit machine emulator and was like, oh my god, 
its fruit machines on our PC. And now to actually have this now, this, this level of graphical fidelity, all of the work that Wizards done on the emulator itself over the years as well, all the little glitches and slight, slight, you know, some where the emulation wasn't perfect, you know, with even with like the old MPU4 machines, even though MPU4 has been there right from day one, because the emulator was originally called MPU34, we had slight issues with like, like a loop, the samples didn't loop properly and, oh dear, mm, flow's good. That kind of thing. So even even the technology that's been in there right from the start has been improved and finessed. And we're now really at get. Oh, go on, flow. Don't catch me yet. We're now at what I would say is really perfect emulation. We we have got essentially the machines running. Oh, fuck off, back to sleep. We've now effectively got the real machines in just about every single regard running on our PCs and it is truly terrific so I cannot doff my cap enough to everyone who has been involved in making this happen and of course Wizards himself for ushering in what I would call the, the, the kind of second era of Fruit Machine emulation with his release of MFME V5 in November 2016 when we kind of thought it was all over we didn't think we'd get another public release of an emulator ever again. And now we've had, what, we have 5, 5.1, 6, and 6.1. So we've had four updates in, in a couple of years. It's, it's amazing, fantastic. Oh, fuck, that was really bad. Superb stuff. And to have, you know, we've got some of the, the classic layout designs, you know, your ploggies and your pooks, and, and new layouts as well, you know, your, your new layout designs, your Vectras and your Tommies. So I know it's, I know Daddy's still around and, and so on. It's uh, I'm going to miss people out, which is why I, I don't tend to do these things, because I always feel bad about the people oh, I forget. So I will just say comprehensively to anyone and everyone ooh, who has been involved or is involved with bringing Fruit Machine emulation to our PCs, because, oh, that's really bad, that's a collect prize. Ah, quite unsatisfactory. Because it does still, sometimes it just kind of stay, take a little step back from Fruit Machine emulation and just to kind of objectively appraise it and think what a, what a remarkable thing it is and how much fun it is and how much enjoyment we can glean from it effectively free and that is thanks to the efforts of other people so yeah absolutely i i doff my cap to you i salute you and thank you very much to everyone your efforts in the past and your continuing efforts because i can load these machines up now and and straight away a little bit of me is transported back 27 years or whatever it is to when I used to play these machines in the pubs and the arcades. It's remarkable stuff. What is slightly less remarkable, however, is how Handicap is playing here. Now, I've got it in my head. I did perhaps... Oh, dear, come on. Oh, there's three holes. Now, there we go. That, that is a jackpot. So, what's going to happen here? It's done three holes, and if you've got a really good number on the reel, it won't spin it. So that is going to be a jackpot. It's going to be three quid, and it's not going to spin that 12. I mean, you could be a dick about it. I mean, the thing is, the one of these here... Was it Bartender? I think Bartender was like um, a win series thing. But really, you're going to have your jackpot. Now, let's have the jackpot sequence. Splendid stuff. I, I would not normally risk that. If you were playing for like a, a streaky type thing at the end, you'd possibly have a go at it. But the thing there is, if you get to the end of the trail, it's just a straight six quid anyway. It's not a repeater. It doesn't start a streak or anything like that. So there's no real reason for it. And I think I've got it in my head that Bartender there in that final little cluster, that is the one that is, is kind of the wind streaky thing, which could go quite big. But there was no point really doing that, because if there was value in these machines back in... These older AWPs, if there was value in them, you would generally get the value out just by playing them normally anyway. So there was not really much in the way of advantage. 
as far as I'm aware, of you know, kind of forcing them out, as it were. So we'll see this out to another feature, just one more feature, and then we will go over to Games Bond. There are loads of these, though. Oh, you, it's, you know, it's, it's worth... Oh, there we are. So that's obviously... Uh, Oh, I was just about to say, they never really lost on 2s and 11s, and it just lost on 11. That is pretty bloody harsh there, Mr. Cap. We are not too happy about that. Okay, we'll... we'll I will still go... Okay, we'll go out for one more feature. What, I'm, I'm 13 quid in. And £8.40 out, so I'm not looking... To, come on. We'll usually give... Oh, that, you know what, it's in a little bit of a stinky mood, this. And, of course, it is on, as ever. We've got a mid-80s percentage payout here. So, they they could be, all of these bar crests had a slightly dark side. I don't think we can get fucking... Well, it's really bad, isn't it? They all had a slight dark side to them. That they, they could, if you caught them wrong, you could have a bad ex. Oh god! Nah, that was never going to happen. If you caught them wrong, you could have a bad time on them. And if you caught, you know, multiple of them wrong in succession, and I think I talked about this in the uh, the Sphinx and Labyrinth video. D don't be fooled, though. As much as I'm singing the praise of these machines, they could all take your pants down if the mood took them. I mean, there was a limit to how much you could lose on a single machine before it would kick a bit of something back, but... Ooh, my word. But if you if you caught multiple of them on, on the on the hop, you that's where your 50, 60, 70... Oh, fucking hell. That's where your 50, 60, 70, 80 pound losses could come from. You only need to catch two or three of these on the bounce in a really bad mood. And you could find yourself losing an awful lot of cash. Which is exactly what happened to me. Now, I'm going to nudge in the left one here. Because that should hopefully hold... Oh, you're in a bad mood, aren't you? You're in a really bad mood. Right. Okay, Andy Cap is in... A, he's very cross with us about So I'm not sure what we've done to upset him. So let's have a little bit of Games Bond. I loved this one. They had this in the Nobles at Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, spent a far too much time in that bloody arcade. Really, there was the one that was um, ne right next to the Metrolink station at Piccadilly Gardens, and the one that was just over the gardens themselves, that was a, a big, big nobles. They did have video games and pinballs in there, and when I was in my better moods, I, or my less badly behaved moods, I managed to stick to the video games and the pinballs, but most of the time, of course... Oh, what, what the fuck? What was that nudge there? That was awful. I was in there for the fruit machines. I do remember this one turning up as a... Br oh, there we are. Hold off for nudges. As a brand new machine and spending quite a lot of time playing it. Well, that's not looking good for getting to the exchange, is it? I mean, what you would usually do there is just collect the 160... Because this gamble is almost certainly going to lose. We'll go for it. Yeah, they, you were. Uh, there was just f one to four and nine to twelve. Where you know you'd have a go on them, but yeah, your your five to eight. So that was pretty much a predetermined lose. I think the machine was basically telling you if you have a gamble on this, I'm going to kill you. We will go for three holes on jackpot because they could all do it. There we are. Look at that. That is three holes. For the fucking jackpot. When was the last time you played a fruit machine that could do that? That could just do three holds for a jackpot? You wouldn't even bother fucking holding the jackpot symbols on a modern fruit machine. But yeah, back in the six pound era, you absolutely would. Because they could just do that and three hold for the jackpot. There we are. Music. And And you get some Axel F as well. You, you get a nice little bar crest <laughs> knockoff of Axel F. You know, so in, in a way, even though the jackpot was so small back then, there was more to it because there was just simple, simple little things like that. You would hold, you know, you would hold good two of a kind, you know, because if you could get three holds on, on, the, on the blue sevens on a good number, 
you would get a gamble to the jackpot and you would hold. I mean, there, honestly, I would probably do that and hold the feature. I wouldn't get, you know, ideas above my station. But, yeah, it was absolutely worth just, just holding. Two jackpot symbols, because if it wanted to, it would give you three holds for them. But the real thing with these, of course, was the features. So let's try and get... I mean, take out that easy jackpot. I've kind of stuffed myself up a little bit, because it, it was actually the feature that I wanted to get on here. So let's do that. Oh, and we have got the feature. There we are. Now then. This is a feature, basically you've got three stages. So this first stage here, just in case you're not familiar with this. The idea here is you want to be collecting gadgets. You land, land on your, I think he's like your Q, isn't he? Land on him to get gadgets. You get, it's, it's chase as well, so you're getting chased by the helicopter. There's the copter coming up behind me. So a little bit like Flo and Andy Cat. And if you, I, I would, oh dear. You would norm that is quite harsh because you would generally speaking expect and you would very well expect to get out of that that should hold oh dear no it's a little bit of a pumpy mood as well the idea is and what you would off you kind of hope uh, you know to expect would happen is that you will get through this first stage here and you'll have gathered a couple of gadgets as well then you've got to get through the second stage where these little lucky kissy lip things can kill you off and then you've got the third stage trying to get to the casino where your gadgets will save you against the shark and the poison and the electrocution and all the rest of it i'll go for an un un unambitious nudge there so we'll, we'll definitely go out for another feature here see what happens mm, yeah okay yeah and there we are. So, right, okay, let, let's let get through this first stage this time. That's fine. I was a little bit surprised, a little bit pissed off that the copter caught me last time. I'm not doing well for getting gadgets here, and I've got... Sometimes it can start you. See this little professor's thought bubbles up here? It can sometimes start you with gadgets, and I've got none. It, you would actually make the case there for just collecting hotshot because I've got no gadgets. So my chances of getting through that end section there are pretty much zero. But let's go for it. Okay, well it doesn't really matter in a way, so you just put me backwards or forwards. And you could actually make the case there that I wanted to go backwards because I've got no gadgets. And if I go into the end a little bit here, I'm, I'm just gonna die. So, you know what, again, I should, in fact, no, no, I'll, I'll just show you what happens. I, I would actually collect that out in the wild. So you can see what happens now. Ooh. Right, so it's now going to put me into Death Alley. I will be amazed if I get through this. Three nudges. Oh, I could collect three quid. So basically, a two, a four, or a six is going to kill me. I've got no gadgets to help me survive. Again, in the wild, if I were playing this for real money, at the nobles at Piccadilly Gardens, I would collect my three quid off the nudge pot here. But let's just go... Oh, we actually fucking made it to the casino! My word, I am amazed that I made that with no gadgets. And now we get a fairly unimpressive, because this could and would do less than six quid quite regularly. You get right to the end, and it gives you like £4.40 or some nonsense like that. Let's have a go. It can just kill you whenever it wants. Oh, and that, no, 460, what did I say? And no repeat, nothing. So for all that effort, I had <laughs> nothing collecting the save three quid. I got £4.60. It is worth going on because it can go big. Once in a while, it will do you like 15, 16, 17, 18 quid, something like that, and you do feel good for getting to the casino but when it's in a bad mood yes it will it will do stuff like that and you'll be in the high three pounds or low four pounds has he got a three old for jackpot again no it isn't okay let's just have one more feature i mean we, we've kind of seen that one now i was really if i'm honest i was rather lucky there T to get to the casino with no gadgets is fairly unusual 
Although at the same time, you can have all the gadgets in the world and it just lands on one sort of hazard after another, takes all your gadgets off you and then still kills you anyway. What do I need here? One, two, oh, fuck off. Go for the double bars. Nope, didn't work. Okay, we'll have one more feature on this. And then we'll probably, where are we at? 45 minutes. We'll probably wrap this up at that point. Feature? No. It did have a little think there with the uh, the sevens with the feature symbol on it. It actually had a little think about it there. What was it going to spin? Oh, there we are. There's our feature. Right, let's see how we do. <laughs> God, my poor bloody throat here, losing my voice. There we are, there's a gadget. Don't catch me, you fucker. Yeah, we should be out of here now. Oh, no way! That was rather harsh, wasn't it? Okay, so I've not done so well on this one. I've lost, uh, yeah, I've lost nearly a tenner on this one. And I lost about eight quid on Andy Cap, but I did a little bit better. Where are the other two? I did a little bit better on these two. So I, I probably about eat. Well, no, I won two quid on that. And yeah, I have lost a few bob overall from these four machines. Now, do remember that these are all on nice mid 80% payouts. And also remember that back in the day, like, there were pubs everywhere. So not only were there far more pubs than there are now, they were all rammed with fruit machines. Just about any pub, even small pubs, would have two fruit machines. So it was very, very easy to just go out and play these things ad infinitum. Add in your, you know, 76%, 74%, 78% payout. And add in someone like me who would quite happily do nothing but play them. It's even then, with this small stake and small prizes, it is easy to see how you could lose quite a lot of money. And I think the Sphinx and Labyrinth video demonstrated that fairly well too. So that is the Barcrest six pounders. That's the list there. It may very well not be complete. That's just what I got from a quick scan through my various fruit machine emulation folders. I kind of love them and hate them in equal measures because they were so good at what they did that they got their hooks into me good and proper to the extent that I could think very often of nothing in the world that I would want to do more than just go out to the pub or go out to the arcade and play them. And I will leave you with just a few samples of one of my favourite fruit machine little jingles playing a little, little fruit machine sample here looping a few times one that i would listen to a little bit like the east enders nudge sample which i talked about in that video whereby when i knew all my money had nearly gone i could at least listen to this sample loop a few times and chill out a little bit despite the knowledge that all my money had gone again so Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. My voice is just about going, I think, so I will catch up with you next time. But for now, goodbye.